Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So in this lecture, I'm going to talk about two-part tariff. And you see at the end of these slides, it also talks about bundling. I don't know that that's going to make it into this lecture. I think that might be a future one. Uh, anyhow, so we are talking about monopoly pricing strategies. And the idea is we've got a monopoly. We've got a firm with market power. And remember the picture we had from standard monopoly pricing. You have the linear demand curve. You have the marginal revenue curve that's everywhere lower than the linear demand curve. Of course, the marginal revenue curve has the same constant marginal average total cost, this created a situation where producer surplus or profits was a square, consumer surplus was a, re was a triangle above that square, and deadweight loss was a triangle to the right of that square. And maybe I'll show the picture in a second. But anyway, there's a lot of stuff happening under that demand curve, a lot of economic surplus that's being dissipated away from our monopolists. And they're thinking, wait a second, we've got monopoly power, we should be able to capture more of this. And that was the motivation for price discrimination. We talked about Second degree price discrimination, third degree price discrimination. First degree is where the firm gives individuals their personalized prices. You charge them exactly an amount equal to their willingness to pay, which is measured by the height of the demand curve. Right, The marginal benefit to consumers or to the consumer for that unit is, the, is their height of the demand curve at that point. Third degree price discrimination, you solve the monopoly MR equals MC problem for each of the different segments of the market, charge a different price and offer a different quantity in each of the two markets. For third degree price discrimination, you're thinking things like adults versus children pricing for movies or something like that, student versus non-student pricing for a uh, for sporting event or performance on campus or whatever. Second degree price discrimination is where everybody faces the same menu of prices and then they choose which option is best for them. So that's like business versus ordinary household software, right? Think of like Adobe or think of Microsoft or something like that. Everybody faces the same prices, but you're not gonna buy the business grade uh, software unless you have business grade uses. Now we're gonna talk about additional options of second degree price discrimination. So two-part tariff, which I'll explain in a second, and then bundling, that'll probably actually come in a later lecture. I think that otherwise this video is gonna be too long. All right, so let's see. My comment about advanced pricing and about two-part tariff can be useful when consumers are choosing both whether to buy and how much to buy. So this is a situation where there is a question about whether to buy and then the intensity of buying. And the idea with a two-part tariff is you're gonna have an access fee that gives consumers the right to then buy that good at whatever is the per unit price henceforth. So you might think of like a Costco membership that then allows you to buy whatever is offered for sale at Costco at that particular price. Another idea might be uh, thinking about, well, uh, access to a park and then the ability or the right to be able to buy concessions or rides or whatever within the park after you've paid the entrance fee. Uh, another example would be printers and ink cartridges, consoles and games. These are situations where there's two different versions or two different ways that the pricing works. There's a fixed component and then there's a per unit component. The fixed component is incurred when you make the up, down, buy or not buy decision. The per unit price is incurred every time you buy another unit of that particular good. And the inter interesting thing here is that sometimes the fixed fee might be high uh, other times it might be low. Sometimes the per unit price might be high. Other times it might be low. We use two-part tariff all the time if we admit the degenerate sense where the entry fee is zero and then you only pay the per unit price. That's like everything you buy when you go to the store, like go and buy like a gallon of milk or a gallon of gas. The entry fee is zero unless you're buying from Costco and then you just pay the per unit price, right? So that's a really low tariff and really high per unit price. Think about when that's a good idea. If your demanders are are very, uh, very different, very um, heterogeneous, then it makes sense to try to maximize by offering different prices and a low ac ac uh, access fee. If you have homogenous demanders, identical demanders, it makes more sense to have a larger, to extract the, via a large tariff. Anyway, so there's a lot of different examples. I'll talk about that intuition a little bit later on. The first example I want to think about is suppose you have just a single consumer type. This is like the type that, that this is the version of two-part tariff that you see most commonly in most uh, textbooks, although it's also not very realistic. Just think about what markets you have where there's a single type of consumers. I mean, everybody's different. So anyway, this is sort of our benchmark case to get the basic intuition. All consumers have the exact same downward sloping demand curve. If you only set a single price, if we have a single price monopolist, this is the picture. And this is exactly the picture I was invoking a second ago. Here is our demand curve. It's bolded. Here's our marginal revenue curve. It has the same vertical intercept, but twice the slope. So this would be the midpoint of the demand curve. 
underneath this part. So the unit elastic parts right here, midpoint of the demand curve is the revenue maximizing point. But that's not relevant here because if you're a single price monopolist, you're not maximizing revenue, you're maximizing profit. So you do that by producing where marginal revenue crosses marginal cost. That'll be this monopoly quantity. That'll be this price. And it's a single price monopolist because this is the price that's going to be charged for every unit. With first degree price discrimination, you charge prices along the demand curve all the way down to here. Here's where the competitive market would stop producing. For third degree price discrimination, maybe you'd be able to seg segment this into two different demand curves and then do this, do the, repeat this problem in each of those. For, uh, for third degree price discrimination rather. And then for second degree price discrimination, well, you'd have a menu of prices and then hopefully be able to extract surplus. Hard to actually draw graphically for second degree price discrimination. But anyway, the point is, this leaves a lot on the table. Where this MR box is, that's actually labeling the marginal revenue curve, but that is the firm's profits or producer surplus. Consumer surplus is here, deadweight loss is here. And there's a lot of economic surplus, that's the area under the demand curve and above the marginal cost, that's not being captured. So the firm says, wait a second, we've got market power, maybe we can do better. So the two-part tariff is exactly the way that you do this. If you have a single consumer type, the way the two-part tariff works is you are going to use the tariff to extract consumer surplus at the per unit price. How's this work exactly? Well, what's going to happen is you're going to set the same price that a competitive market would set. It's at price equal to marginal cost, you produce this quantity, and the entire area under the curve would therefore be consumer surplus. However, Let's just set the access fee, the fixed component, equal to the, what would be the consumer surplus when price is equal to marginal cost. And that's the optimal two-part tariff. So my comment here, it's optimal to set marginal cost equal to price, set your tariff equal to consumer surplus at the point where price equals marginal cost. There's no per unit profits, obviously, just as nor are there in the competitive market. Nevertheless, you capture all the surplus because you have set the access fee equal to uh, equal to the consumer surplus that's generated would consumers buy at that price, right? That's this picture. If this is the competitive market picture, the competitive market produces here, charges this price, this whole area I'd label as consumer surplus, but in a two-part tariff picture, we label this as PS, as producer surplus, because you'll just set the tariff, the fixed component, exactly equal to this surplus, and consumers will pay it. All right, so that is the single type consumer or single type of two-part tariff. Now I'm going to say, suppose we have multiple types of consumers. So the example here, suppose we have something like mobile data. We're going to have a tariff. The tariff is going to be the monthly fee the consumer is paying just for access to the network. The price is going to be the price the consumer is paying per megabyte used. Quantities for the megabytes of data the consumer is going to choose to purchase every month, their usage intensity, and we have two types of consumers, a thousand of each. We have our hardcore consumers with demand given by Q is equal to 60 minus 60p. We have our casual consumers with demand equal to QC is equal to 30 minus 30p. We'll assume we have a fixed cost of bandwidth, 15,000 a month, and the marginal cost of providing additional access or an extra megabyte is zero. So zero marginal cost. That's actually not an unreasonable assumption here or with information goods more generally, but it's actually going to simplify down our calculation a little bit. All right, so there's two possible strategies we could do if we have two types of consumers. One is we could ignore the fact that we could use this advanced pricing strategy. We could just do a single price monopoly. That's part one. So I'm gonna do that first. Don't confuse yourself. That is not two-part tariff that I'm gonna do first. That is just gonna be the standard single, uh, single price monopolist. The other thing you could do is you could do a two-part tariff and now you've got a choice to make. You could go for only the hardcore group or you could go for both groups. And we'll see that in turn. So the first thing here, you could charge a single price. This here has nothing to do with two-part tariff, right? This is just the single price monopolist. I'm just solving the single price monopolist case as a benchmark to show later on why two-part tariff is awesome. So here's my individual demands. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sum the individual demands. Remember, we had a thousand consumers, so I'm gonna multiply by a thousand my hardcore, my casual demanders to get this demand curve. Q is equal to 90,000 minus 90,000 P. Now I'm going to convert this to an inverse demand curve by solving for P, right? Inverse demand is price in terms of quantity. Demand is quantity in terms of price. So now we've got the inverse demand curve, which is exactly what we graph. So I'll draw the graph that we're familiar with. That's, that's going to come in a second. First, let's do the profit maximizing. Uh, the single price monopolist profit maximizing step. So my inverse market demand is price is equal to one minus Q over 90,000. We maximize profit, pi is profit. We are gonna use pi for profit because P is price. Price times quantity is revenue minus fixed cost. Sorry, this is like price times quantity. This is multiplication, that's revenue. And then FC, it's like F times C. No, this is just fixed cost. So I, pre I apologize.
abbreviating quantity. Here I'm abbreviating fixed cost, and it's not a product. Anyway, so we're gonna have we're gonna have this right here is price. Let's multiply that by a Q. So this becomes Q minus Q squared minus the fixed cost. I'm gonna differentiate with respect to quantity. And when I do that, I'm gonna have one minus two Q over 90,000 is equal to zero. And then solving, you can verify, this is just the revenue maximizing uh, situation, right? Because there's no marginal cost. And if there's no marginal cost, my profit maximization boils down to revenue maximization. So you should be able to pick out this point immediately because it's just the midpoint of this darn thing, right? The vertical intercepts is one. And so the, the price corresponding to the midpoint is gonna be 0.5. And then the horizontal intercept is going to be 90,000. So corresponding to the midpoint is a quantity of 45,000. I'll show that graph in a second. But anyway, if we go ahead and calculate the profits, it's going to be 45,000 minus 45,000 squared divided by 90,000 minus 1,500 fixed cost is going to be profits of 7,500. All right, so this is just if you charge a single price. We have not yet done two-part tariff. So let's do that in a, in a second. Here's the graph, right? When the marginal cost is zero, when we're maximizing profit, that's where marginal cost crosses marginal revenue. Oh, that's why the profit maximization rule boils down to the the monopoly or the uh, revenue maximizing rule when marginal costs are zero. That's because marginal cost crosses marginal revenue here. When marginal revenue is zero, total revenue is maximized. Here's the midpoint of the demand curve. That's the, this is one is the vertical intercept. So the midpoint requires a price of 0.5. The horizontal intercept was 90,000. So that requires a, a the midpoint requires a uh, horizontal value of 45,000. And this is my profit maximization quantity and my monop and my monopoly's revenue maximizing quantity. We saw the profits associated with that was 7,500. All right, very good. Now suppose we decide to enact a two-part tariff, and we had two different groups. We had the low, we had the casual group, and we had the hardcore group. Let's just assume we're going to ignore our casual group. Maybe they're small relative to our hardcore demanders. Let's just set, let's set price equal to marginal cost. Let's find what is going to be the quantity, and then what's going to be the consumer surplus for our hardcore group. Let's set that equal to our, let's set our tariff, our fixed fee equal to consumer surplus of the hardcore group when price is equal to marginal cost. If we do that, that's awesome. We'll fully extract surplus from the hardcore group, but we have ignored the casual group. Why? Because they're not going to buy at this higher fee because their consumer surplus at the price of at the marginal cost of zero, price equal marginal cost of zero, is going to be smaller than what it's going to be for the hardcore group. So we will lose them. For the hardcore consumers, the demand is given by Q is equal to 60 minus 60P. At a price of zero, right, this is just treating them as a single homogenous group. We'd set price equal to marginal cost equals zero. The tariff turns out to be $30 a month, right? One half base times height. Here's the height, one, here's the base, 60. One half base times height gives me the area of this triangle, right? One half times one times 60 is the th is, sorry, is the 30 per month. So this would be the tariff for my hardcore consumers. You can verify for the casual consumers using this, using this representation, what's the casual consumers tariff gonna be? The maximal tariff? It's like, what, I think it's gonna be like 15. So there's no way the casual consumers are gonna buy at the access fee of $30 per month. They're gone. Where are the casual consumers? They're gone. What are my profits though if I ignore them? Well, it's 30 times 1,000 because I've got 30 of these hard, Sorry, I've got a thousand of these hardcore consumers paying thirty dollars a month for access, um, plus my mar my per unit profits, which is price minus marginal cost, which is zero minus zero, which is zero, minus my fixed costs of fifteen thousand, and this gives me profits of fifteen thousand. We have doubled. This is not true in general. It's true in this example. We have doubled our profits by using a two part tariff and by ignoring our casual consumers. This was not two-part tariff. This is the single price monopoly. Here I did a two-part tariff, but I did the naive version of the two-part tariff. I did this for a homogenous group of demanders, but we don't have a homogenous group of demanders. We have a hardcore group and a casual group. So now let's try to keep our casual demanders in. So what we want to do is we want to set a lower tariff to keep the casual customers in, capture maximal profits. What we want to do is we want to find an optimal price we want to find an optimal price and an optimal tariff. Remember, we are setting the tariff equal to consumer surplus associated with a given price. Previously, the tariff we set was equal to consumer surplus of the hardcore group at a price of zero, right? 
So previously, we set the tariff equal to consumer surplus of the hardcore group at a price of zero. We set price equal to marginal cost. Now let's do this for our casual demanders. And if you, if you write this out, the area under the triangle is going to be given by, the consumer surplus of the casual group is going to be given by 1 half, 1 minus p, 30 minus 30p is equal to 15 quantity times the quantity 1 minus p squared. And you're staring at that, and that's horrible, so I've got a picture. Whoops, I've got an example. I've got an example, and then I've got a picture. I hope I can go through all these. Let's see. Here I had everything queued up, and I thought I was being so clever, and I realized I wasn't. All right. So we have our hardcore demander, 60 minus 60p. We have our casual demanders, 30 minus 30p. Fixed cost of 15,000, margin of cost of zero. Suppose we only sold to the hardcore demanders. That's just what we did a second ago, right? We set price equal to marginal cost. We set the, the tariff was going to be 1 half 60 times 1. That was this, and we found that was 30. We calculated the profits. It was 15,000. So I did that a second ago. Now let's set the, the tariff lower to keep the casual customers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, wait a second. This tariff, this area under the curve, is going to be a function of price. And we want to find that optimal price, which is good because in Intermediate Micro, we know how we can optimize. We can set up a profit maximization uh, expression, we can choose the optimal price. Matter of fact, what we're ultimately going to do is we're going to write out the firm's profit function as a function of price, take a derivative and solve for the optimal price, and built in is the fact that that's also going to kick out our optimal tariff. So here's how this works. I'm going to set the tariff equal to the consumer surplus of my casual group at this price, at this price that we don't know. We're going to find it, though. So here's the, here's the demand for my casual group, right? It's going to be 1 minus, and then suppose the price is 0, the, the horizontal intercept is 30, right? That was just coming from our demand for our casual, casual demanders right here. OK, good. And notice, for a given price, that's going to change the area of this triangle, right? If this price is 0, then the area of the triangle is going to be 1 half times 1 times 30. It's going to be 15. But as this price rises, let's just look at the degenerate sense. Suppose I make this price equal to 1. 1 half base times height is just 0, right? And as we rise or lower this p bar, that's going to change the area of this triangle, which we've set equal to our tariff. So what I want to do, though, is I want to say, all right, well, I can get this area of the triangle as a function of this price. So what's, what's this going to be? It's going to be 1 half base times height. Well, right here, I'm going to have a 1 minus p. So that's why it was like 1 half, 1 minus p. That's where this is coming from. This 1 minus p upper bar, that's going to vary where this p bar is. And then I'm going to have a length right here. It's going to correspond to the quantity associated with this price. As this price rises, this quantity is going to go closer to 0. As this price falls, the quantity is going to go further to the intercept. That quantity is just the demand for my casual demanders, right? It's just Q is equal to 30 minus 30p. Got it. It's right there. It's this right here. So, right, if P is 0, then the quantity is 30. If P is 1, then the quantity is 0. Sure enough, this is a demand curve. This is a demand relationship. That's right. So I'm going to have 1 half times this length times 30 minus 30P. And as I'm staring at this, I'm like, that looks awful. Why don't I factor out a 30? So I did. I pulled out a 30. Now I'm going to have 1 minus, uh, 1 minus 1 bar times 30 times 1 minus 1 bar, quantity 1 minus 1 bar. So I've got what 30 times 1 half is 15 times the quantity 1 minus uh, 1 bar, right? And so here's a function for consumer surplus for the casual group as a function of price. Indeed, let's check this again. Suppose the price is 0, consumer surplus is 15. Sure enough, if the price is 0, it's the 1 half base times height is going to be 1 times 30 times a half. That's 15. Sure enough, this formula works. If the price is 1, consumer surplus is 0. That's because the price is way up here. There's no consumer surplus. Indeed, this function works. So this is going to give me my optimal tariff. I can drop this into the profit statement that I'm going to develop. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out, I'm going to write out an expression for profit. And the way this works, let's just ignore this graph for a second. Here's going to be profit as a function of price. It's going to be 2 times 1,000 because I've got 1,000 of each type of consumers and I'm going to sell uh, to choose from and I'm, going to, and I'm going to sell to both groups. So 2 times 1,000, I'm selling to both groups. So we've got 2,000 consumers times the tariff, right? Tariff as a function of price. So what's this whole product going to give me? It's going to be 2,000 times whatever is my tariff, because I'm going to get my 2,000, 2,000. Uh, sorry, I'm going to get my tariff 2,000 times because all 2,000 consumers are going to buy. To this, I'm going to add my per unit profits from my hardcore group. 
right? It's going to be a thousand hardcore demanders times price times quantity is revenue. Quantity is just their demand as a function of P. We've got it. It's 60 minus 60 P plus my revenue from my casual demanders. 1000 times P times uh, QC. This is the demand for my casual demanders, right? We've got it. It's 30 minus 30 P and then minus my fixed cost. Here, marginal cost is zero. Suppose marginal cost was not zero. What would I do? I would make this rather than just a thousand times P bar times Q, I'd write this as a thousand times the quantity P minus MC Q H bar, right? And I've got some, I've got another video where I'll go through with marginal cost not equal to zero, and you can see that. All right. Then if I plug in the values we've got, here it is. Two times a thousand times this expression, 15 times one minus P squared. Where'd that come from? It was right here. That was our expression for consumer surplus of the casual group as a function of this price, right? Okay, so then my per unit profits from my hardcore demanders is gonna be a thousand times the price times my hardcore demand. Then my per unit profit from my casual demanders is gonna be a thousand times the price times my casual demanders minus my 15,000 fixed cost. If I do this to solve, I'm going to take a derivative, take d pi dq, or sorry, d, d pi dp. Um, I'm going to deriv take the derivative with respect to price. That'll give me my optimal price. When you solve, that will give you your optimal per unit price, which you can then evaluate in this expression for consumer surplus of my casual group, and that'll give me my optimal tariff in one fell swoop. That's brilliant. It's awesome. So if you do this, if you solve this out, you'll get a price of 0.25. If you plug this into my consumer surplus as a function of that price, well, it comes out to be 843. Um, my, the quantity demanded by my casual demanders is gonna be 22.5. My quantity demanded by my hardcore demanders is 45. My profits overall, 18,750. If you remember from before, if we sell only to our hardcore demanders, it's 15,000 profits. If we sell, if we do a single price monopolist, which was not two part tariff, we'd get profits of 7,500. So my optimal tariff is gonna be $8.43. My optimal per unit price is gonna be is gonna be 25 cents. All right, and that is absolutely brilliant. So let me go back to the slides before I do this example. And so that was this picture. What's happening in the picture? Well, I am getting this area, this tariff from both demanders, both my, my casual demanders for sure they're buying it because I've said it so that they're indifferent between buying and not buying it. And my hardcore demanders will buy it because right their demand is way out here. Their consumer surplus at this price is gonna be way out here. So what am I losing? I'm losing this whole area right here from my hardcore demanders. But what am I gaining? Well, I'm getting per unit profits from my casual demanders right here. Matter of fact, I'm getting this twice because my hardcore demanders are paying these per unit profits and then these per unit profits, right? Because their demand is all the way out here. So what's happening is I'm lowering my tariff price, my fixed price, but I'm raising my per unit price and this is allowing me to optimally extract profits given that I've got heterogeneous demanders. All right, so this was just the work from before. I had this on the, I had this on the handwritten version. As you can see, I like the handwritten version better because I can annotate this. I can do some cool stuff with LaTeX, to, but it gets really cramped. And then I could have written over with my iPad, but it just works better to write it up by hand because since I had that thing already. So this just, we went over this already. That's from the slide from before. Now, in cases where you can charge for access, two-part tariff can increase profits. Just like your self-selection by quality, however, second degree price discrimination, this can be difficult to get done in practice because you have to estimate a lot of different demand curves and you don't know where they are. There's also probably more than two consumer groups. So what do you do? Well, uh, you do your best. You try to estimate demand as closely as possible and then it ultimately becomes a lot of trial and error and testing with the uh, economists in the organization. But anyway, so if you're able to do it this close enough, then you want to determine whether it's most effective to extract profits either through a high tariff and a low access fee, like a cell phone plan or a gym membership, or a high access fee and a low fixed fee, uh, like printers, game consoles, uh, razors and razor blades. And uh, my comment is, note that for printers and game consoles, the access fee might be implicitly negative, meaning below the cost of access. You might give people, you might subsidize or give people free access. Why? Because you can make so much back on the per unit, pro uh, per unit profits. Remember famously, Microsoft with the Xbox was selling the Xbox at a loss, at least as the story goes, because then the game titles, they're able to make so much back on uh, licensing games. You might have... Uh, different combinations where you'd have 
different combinations of high and low uh, access fees and then per unit prices, you may even see a situation where you give away some of the units for free and it's like a three-part tariff. So that'd be like when you go to the store, you can buy razors and razor blades. Very often they'll give you some razors with the razor blade or sometimes printers will come with an ink cartridge in uh, already packaged. What's the goal there? Well, you're trying to pick up your really low intensity demanders. Now, if we haven't got the quantitative data, if you're not able to estimate the demand curves, here's some intuition. Consumers who are very similar in their demands, the high tariff can be really profitable, right? If you have similar demand curves, then you can, especially in the degenerate case where you just have one type of demander, set price equal to marginal cost, and then set the tariff equal to consumer surplus at that price, then that's the optimal tariff. With highly variable demand across consumers, it's better to extract profits using the per unit profit. So you'd set a lower tariff like we just did for our, for our hardcore and casual demanders, and the high and the um, and the profits are coming. The reduced profits from the tariff are being made up for by the higher per unit profits, and this is especially useful when your high per unit valuations are also your high intensity demanders. They're also the ones who demand more units. Why? Because you're making that high per unit margin on a on consumers who are buying quite a bit of product. Other considerations? Well, consumers might be reluctant to pay the high tariff for products that they're not familiar with. Why would you want to pay a big access fee for something you don't know if you're going to use? So that can be a consideration. Maybe you give access for free. That's one of the reasons why razors might come with, um, with a razor blade for free. There can be a big penalty for setting the tariff too high, possibly higher than setting the per unit price too high. Why? Because if the access fee is too high, consumers aren't going to buy the system in the first place. If the per unit price is too high, well, your low demanders might still buy one unit of a high overpriced product just because they really need it. But you're not going to buy the whole system if it's overpriced relative to what consumers are seeing. So, and you know, especially when you have very high, highly variable demanders, you might see you might see uh, the the near zero or the really low access fee, and they're trying to make it up on the per unit price because of this issue. If the tariff is too high, you might lose your demanders in the first place. Uh, other schemes or points to make, what you can combine two-part tariffs with third-degree price discrimination. What I mean by this is suppose we have our two different demanders, our hardcore demanders and our casual demanders, and we separate them. We offer a different access fee and a different per unit price within those two separate segments. That's like third degree price discrimination, right? So I identify one group as students, identify another group as, uh, as alums or as non-students, and you offer a student discount, uh, an access fee that's a cheaper discount or cheaper access fee for students, and, and then maybe the same per unit fee for concessions within the stadium, then you would for your non-students, maybe you'd offer regular price tickets to get in, and then the, they pay the same per unit price for concessions or whatever is the case. But the point is, with the, the idea of combining second degree price discrimination with third degree, or with two-part tariff with third degree price discrimination, is you could separate those two markets and give them their own two-part tariff. You can have a menu of two-part tariffs, right? So this is like second-degree price discrimination where consumers choose from a menu of options, they do which is right for them, and then they self-select. This is actually really good for the, for the standpoint of the firm, getting information as consumers are revealing something about their preferences. And then three-part tariffs, that's like what I was describing, where you might give some of the product away for free. Okay, I'm not going to go into the bundling slides. That'll be a different video. Here's an example, two-part pricing. Consider your optimal pricing decisions as a monopolist with marginal cost equal to 10, no fixed cost. There's two types of consumers, casual and hardcore. Monopolist estimates casual demand to be represented by 90 minus P. Hardcore demand to be 180 minus 2P. Suppose the firm decides to set a price of 10. That's setting price equal to marginal cost, right? Assuming the monopolist must offer the same tariff to both groups, find the optimal tariff given these conditions. Find the tariff profits, per unit profits, and total profits. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm offering the same tariff to both groups. That means I'm either going to set my access fee equal to consumer surplus of my hardcore demanders or my, or my casual demanders at, the, at price equals marginal cost. And I'm going to check to see which is going to yield higher profits, whichever one, that's what I'm going to go with. Suppose the firm no longer necessarily restricts itself to setting price equal to 10, price equal to marginal cost, but must offer an identical price and tariff to both casual and hardcore consumers sell for the optimal tariff profits per unit profits and total, pro total profits. All right, well, if I'm setting any price I want, but I have to set the same price and tariff, same price and fixed fee to both groups, that is exactly what we did before in the casual and hardcore demanders example, where we found the price of 0.25 and the tariff of $8.43. That's part B. That's what we're doing. 
Now suppose the firm is actually able to offer different tariffs to each group of consumers sell for the optimal profits per unit profits and total profits. This is where you're coupling. Part C is where you're coupling two-part tariff with third degree price discrimination. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna segment the groups. I'm gonna set price equal to 10 in both markets and then set the th access fee equal to their respective consumer surpluses separately for the two different demanders. And so that's, that's the solution to that problem. Let's take a look. Part A, the firm has to choose to serve. Maybe you don't wanna see me, maybe you wanna see the question. The firm has to choose. It's gonna be small, sorry. Uh, I can see if I can fix this a little bit. That, well, here I thought I was being so clever. I was being so clever. All right. Well, uh, let's see. Okay. All right, that's, clo hey, that's close enough. It's gotta to choose to serve casual hardcore consumers or just hardcore consumers. Per unit profits are zero regardless. Why? Because I'm setting price equal to marginal cost, right? Price equal to marginal cost, marginal cost was 10. Uh, so pro per unit profits are zero regardless. Tariff profits from serving casual and hardcore consumers are found from doubling consumer surplus of the lower group at the price of 10. If I set consumer surplus, if I set the tariff equal to consumer surplus of the casual group, both the casual group and the hardcore group will buy at that fixed fee, hence doubling the tariff, hence doubling the, the tariff to get uh, the, the fixed component to get my tariff profits. And so if I do that, casual consumers will have a, the, the area of that triangle will be one half 90 minus 10 times 80, um, or what, 80 squared divided by two, 6,400 divided by two is 3,200. So the tariff and total profits are 6,400. Why? Because I'm doubling this because I get this from both groups. If we sell to only the hardcore group, profits are just the tariff profits from the hardcore group at the price of 10. And so their area, their triangle is gonna be 6,400. Either way, the profits are 6,400. Matter of fact, it turns out, it doesn't matter if I try to set, if I try to ignore the casual demanders, or if I try to set the, and set the, the fixed fee equal to the consumer surplus, the hardcore demanders, my profits are 6,400, that's this right here. Or if I set the tariff equal to the consumer surplus of the casual demanders at price equals marginal cost pricing, and then sell that fixed fee to both groups, either way, my profits are 6,400. Okay, next one, part B. Suppose we can no longer restrict ourselves to setting price equal to 10, simply must offer identical price and tariff to both consumers. Well, now what I wanna do is get profit as a function of price and find the optimal price. So profit, pi is a function of price. This two is because I have two different demanders times one half, because this is the area. This right here is consumer surplus of my casual group as a function of price, right? That's this right here, one half 90 minus P times uh, Q. This would be my this would be my uh, demand for my uh, this, this is my per unit dem or um, sorry this would be my casual demanders uh, demand why is it squared well if you write out the casual demanders and if, if, you know so th that's where this comes from I would I would I would recommend writing this out I, I regret actually not having that here but I may have done this in a different video anyway so I would write this out make it look like the example we just did this right here this one half 90,000 quantity 90 minus P squared this is exactly the expression for my casual demanders consumer surplus as a function of P right here price minus 10 this is my per unit profits price minus marginal cost times 90 minus P this is my casual demanders demand price minus marginal cost is my per unit this is like markup if price is bigger than 10 and this is my this is my hardcore demanders uh, demand uh, uh, demand function right here right 180 minus 2p. So here are here is my tariff profits my uh, my fixed prof my profits coming from the fixed fees right here. Here's my per unit profits from the casual demanders per unit profits from the hardcore demanders. We had no fixed costs. I'm going to take a part or take the derivative with respect to p. And if you do this, if you check my algebra, you'll come up with a price of 30. We can drop that price of 30 into our expression for consumer surplus of my casual group at the price of 30, you'll get 1800, which I will get from both groups. So I'll multiply that by two to be my, my, per, my, my fixed, my profits from the fixed fee, which is 3,600 overall. And my per unit profits are 1,200 from the casual demanders, 2,400 from the hardcore demanders. Why? Let's put in 30. That's gonna be 30 minus 10 is 20 times 180 minus, uh, 180 minus 60, and if you multiply it out, that's 2,400. And then here, this is gonna be 30 minus 10 is 20 times 90 minus uh, 30 is 60, 20 times 60. That was where the 1,200 came from. So here's my per unit profits from casual, per unit profits from hardcore, my tariff profits adding up, I'll end up getting 7,200, which is a lot better than if I just sell, if I, if I just sell to one group, or if I set, if I do per unit pricing uh, for 
for both groups uh, setting at setting the tariff at the casual demands tariff. Now the optimal is what if I can segment my two groups into two different groups of consumers? This is like third degree price discrimination coupled with two part tariff. Now I'm gonna set price equal to marginal cost, price equals to 10 for my casual demanders and generate their own tariff or their own fixed component. Set price equal to marginal cost for my hardcore demanders and generate their own per unit or uh, fixed component and then add that up. And if we do that, well, we've got the areas up here already, right? We did this in part A. I love writing exam questions like this. This was an exam question. I love writing exam questions like this. Why? Because by the time you get to part C, you have nothing less to do left to do besides add up this to this and you have our profits. Why? Because we already solved individually. Uh, we did all the work we need for this to be our separate market for casual demanders and this to be our separate market from hardcore demanders that's this right here isn't that brilliant i think so i'm really proud of this question <laughs> i hope you like it as well anyway hope you like the video hope you enjoy hope you're staying uh, healthy happy safe like subscribe whatever good day everyone